Now this tutorial is really important for many of you producers, engineers, musicians, and there are some key points to this whole thing that you really need to keep in mind when you are exporting your stems, in particular when working in Logic Pro. Now before you get, we get into this, I want to remind you to like the video if you find that I'm bringing you value. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out the other range of videos that I've got on my channel. Okay, so as a producer, musician, and engineer, there are times when you will need to export your Logic project as individual audio files for distribution, maybe to send to another engineer, another producer, another musician, to add additional production, recordings, or even for a final mix. Another reason for doing it is if you're working in Logic, and let's say your engineer is working in Pro Tools, you're gonna to need to send audio stems of your production in a format that will actually open up in Pro Tools. And therefore you will need to convert all of your MIDI and audio tracks into a format that will work across different doors. So today I'm just gonna show you real quick how I go about doing it. Now the first thing you'll notice is I generally try to keep my projects well organized. All of my drums are up here. The color coded horns are down here. They're color coded and my guitars are further down. Okay. And that's quite handy, especially when you're trying to do things in a logical way so that if someone else needs to work on your project, it actually makes sense and it's easier for them to navigate. Next thing I generally do is come to the mixer and play back. I'll scan through the entire song, making sure that none of my tracks are overloading or clipping. That's really important because the last thing you really want to be doing is storing or distributing distorted or clipped audio tracks. Now having checked that everything is in order and all of the audio is coming through nice and clean without any issues, the very next thing I do, which is really, really important, is I scroll right along to the very end of the project and right here you'll see the project end locator and you want to pull this in all the way through to about here maybe about one or two bars after the end of the very last region and this will allow for your reverb tail and the next thing i make sure of is that all of my tracks are properly labeled this is an important step because once you export if you don't label these things properly you're going to be in a right pickle trying to figure out what is what okay so i've done that and we're good to go so the next thing we want to do is come up here to file export and you have quite a few options the one you want is all tracks as audio files now this dialog box is important because this is where you set all of the parameters all of the settings that you want to have associated with your exported files starting from here if you want to try and keep your file size down you might want to trim silence at end of file alternatively you might want to extend the file length to the very end of the project that way every single export will be exactly the same length the save format again you've got a range that you might want to choose from and the bit depth if i'm exporting this project for someone to add some additional production and send back to me then 16 bit is all right but if i'm sending it for maybe an engineer to take over or moving it on because i finished my bit i'm always exporting at 24 bit that's a higher quality export the other important thing that you might want to consider is whether or not to select bypass effects plugins depending on what sound you're exporting now if one of your tracks or instruments has a very unique sound that's been created and crafted based on the effects plugins you've used and definitely you want to make sure you print those effects to the actual track that's being exported otherwise if it's simply a case of sending this on so that another person is going to take over and mix it you might want to think well do i need to include my processing or should i leave all of the processing to the other person oftentimes i generally bypass again it's up to you include audio tail is to do with the reverb if there's reverb at the very end of the bounce of each track do you want to include that or not do you want to include volume automation and pan automation Again, these are all up to you. I generally have normalized switched off and I don't add the resulting files to project browser. What I generally do is create a brand new folder. So let's say test stems, create this folder. And when I do my export, I'll point to that folder. The last thing down here is your naming convention or pattern. Now mine is set up as custom project name, space dash space track name. Okay. And what you can do is I can, for example, let's say, for example, I wanted to add the track number, then I can pull this up here and Logic will automatically scan through each one of 
my tracks and to name each file according to this convention. So let's say my custom name, which will go first, was stems for Allen. I add a space and a dash. What we'll get is stems for Allen space dash, the name of the project, then we've got name of the track, and then the track number. So right here, after track name, I'm going to come right here in between here, click there, space dash space. And this here is our track number. And this is a really good way of setting things up so that making things logical and clear for yourself and for anyone else working with these stems, it will be so much easier. Now, all I do is click export and the files will then be exported to the folder I created. Now here are the files and here are all of the tracks. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is go to back to Logic, open a new project, and now I'm going to select um, all of these files and just dump them into my new project. I'm going to choose Create New Tracks, and I'm going to select this. All selected files are stems from one project, and OK. Now Logic will analyze the tempo of the audio stems, and then calculate the tempo for the overall project, which as we can see is 75 BPM. And let's just look through this. All of my files have been brought in. And as you can see, all of the naming actually makes sense. I can now go through and move things around. Let's say if I want my kick drum track at the top, I put it to the top and just work my way through and just organize this project. Now, as you can see, everything is in order and they all end pretty much where I want them to end. Now, another important thing that I do once I'm happy that all of the files actually stack up in the arrange window, I go back to the mixer and I'll play through and make sure that the I'll make sure that the audio itself is not clipping because some of the plugins that I would have taken off would be there to control gain. And if I've bypassed those plugins, the gain is going to be free to roam. So over here on the master bus, this clipping here is not important because, because all of the faders are at unity gain and nothing's been mixed. These are just the raw files being played back. Okay, and once I've done that and I'm happy, I'll be able to send this on to the next person with confidence knowing that the file integrity in terms of levels are on point. And now that I've checked that all of the files are in order and ready for distribution, I can go back to my my files like so. I can then compress them into a single zip file and then send these off to the next person who's going to be working on my project. Now remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found value in this tutorial. I'll be back with more. I'm Deuce. I'm out. Peace.